oh my gosh, don't do this or this, okay? There are two big mistakes that I see creatives doing when it comes to their sales pages. I may not win too many friends saying this, but I also don't wanna sugarcoat things because your time is so very precious. And if you're spending time working on the conversion copy and the design of your sales page, I wanna make sure that we are stewarding your time well so you can make that investment back. As I say around here, making sure that you are working from a place of rest, not hustle 24 seven. Whether you're writing your very first sales page for your business or you have written a lot before, I wanna show you today what it takes to go from good to amazing. Today, I'm taking you through the do's and the don'ts of sales pages. The first thing that I see creatives do is that you have bought a sales page design template and you're using it as a drag and drop way to paint by number your way to sales success. Here's the deal and why I'm even qualified to talk about this with you. My name is Ashlyn Carter. I'm a conversion copywriter just for creatives like you. And I've written so many sales pages that I should probably sit down and mark out exactly how many I've done because of lost count. I looked a lot of sales page design templates out there when I was researching writing this video. And while they are a great starting off point. In this video, I'll unpack some big things that they're missing and give you some do's that you can do along the way to make them better. The second thing that I see creatives doing is using some live sales page out there and putting it on the side while you work on yours and using it as a blueprint or template to guide you through DIYing your own sales page. I admire your grit because you may not even know what is working or not working on that, but you're going for it but I know you're not doing that, right? Yes, you can and you should be taking creative inspiration from both sales page design templates out there and live sales pages themselves. I want you to be putting those into your swipe file, but I want you to use some tried and true copy techniques as well as some persuasion principles, putting those in place to make sure that that launch really makes a splash and that's what this video is all about. Yes, you can look to that sales page design template to get you going, but you need to know enough about sales pages to be a little bit dangerous to really get things cooked up. I'm telling you what I've learned from writing sales pages for my own multiple six-figure launches, as well as what I've learned from working on client projects that have generated up to a half a million dollars. These are the sales page principles that work. Let's dive into the first don't, which is this. Don't spend way more time telling me about the offer than you are on the positioning of it in the sales argument before. So let me back up. There's two big parts to any sales page. The first half, which is all about creating that desire and the positioning, and then the second half where you actually introduce the offer and tell what it includes. Okay. You wanna have me salivating before you ever mention the program or the offer or the workshop. Absolutely craving it. To be honest, I don't even really care so much if I'm scrolling through this part of your page if I can't quite tell what it is that you're trying to sell me yet. Sometimes I kinda of like a little bit of mystery like that. I just wanna know that you're gonna help me solve my problem. Maybe you're gonna pitch me a mastermind or a course or a product or an ebook or some kind of download. I don't know and I kinda of like that. I wanna be so immersed in that first part of your page that I'm there with you and absolutely drooling over what it is that you are going to offer me. Psst, your readers care more about themselves than about you. And a sales page that barely spends any time trying to tell me what my fears and my pains and the way that they're going to help me solve this problem, any of that, and one that just immediately puts the offer under my nose, ugh. Kind of a giveaway that the person selling this doesn't really get me. Does this start to make sense, these two big chunks, these halves of your sales page? If it is, I want you to pop below and comment if you're starting to track along with me. The do instead, I want you to make it a little bit more 50-50. No, that's not exact, but what I'm hoping is that by going out there and really showing your ideal customer or client how well you know them, you are earning their trust. I want you to tell me why I can trust you. I know at this point you may be thinking, okay, if I'm spending so much time though on an entire half of my sales page making this argument and telling my ideal client or customer that I understand them, who is going to even read a long page like that? Do people even read medium or long form sales pages? Uh, yeah, they do. The beauty of a long form sales page is that you're earning that opportunity to kind of control their experience and the presentation of this information. I want you to really prove to your ideal client or customer how you can earn them this transformation. Don't number two, your call to action buttons have me confused or they're in the wrong spots. I love how e-commerce writer Kaylee Moore said this. She compared it to, it's like when you open up your closet and you look at all your clothes and you say, oh, I just have nothing to wear. The do here, I want you to eliminate any call to action buttons that are going to get in the way of getting your reader down that focused single clear path. 
It's all about white space here. Do not crowd your call to action button, okay? A Smashing Magazine article cited a UX study that shows that using more white space can increase conversion up to 20%. Give it room to breathe. Let it stand alone on the page. Watch how many times you're doing it too. There's a thing as too many call to action buttons to the same thing on one page, and there's a thing as too few. Your call to actions need to be working together towards a single goal, not tripping up the reader as they're working through your sales page. The final don't, don't miss out on the opportunity to guide my mind down one single clear focused message. When I first moved over from agency and corporate marketing into having my own business and writing copy all the time, I didn't really know how to write a sales page. I was recommending two columns here, two columns there. I didn't really know that people who know a lot about conversion would tell you that multiple columns are gonna drive conversion down a little bit. If you're a copy and design are a mess and my eye has no idea where on the page you want me to look to first, you're missing out on a golden opportunity to guide me down this sales page, to guide me through that messaging hierarchy you want me to work through. If I'm bebopping from column to column trying to figure out what to read first or if everything is so horizontally positioned or you've got copy going all sorts of directions on your page. It's like I'm watching a ping pong match trying to get down this page just for you to sell me on something that I need and that's a whole lot of work. You need to control how your reader moves down the page and exactly what is presented to them along the way. You need to be as persuasive as possible on your sales page. If copy and information is in multiple columns or buckets or it spans the entire width of the page, you're making your reader do a whole lot of unnecessary work. If you've overdone it too with horizontal horizontal striping, show it users, you know how you can use multiple canvases, but if you've done so many of those that it's like whiplash scrolling down the page, that also is a little bit of a stressor, at least in my opinion. Trust the copy to dictate the design, not the other way around, and help the reader understand those breaks in the sales arguments when you can with the design. The do here, I want you to write your copy in some sort of document first, not straight in that template or in your website design. Then once you've got your headlines, your subheadlines, your body copy, and all all the rest of the copy ready to go and in that document, then it's time to import it into the design. There, you can sit back and see what needs to be trimmed back, what's too long, what takes up too much space, or what goes way too long on a line. Does that make sense? This is something that I did for sales page clients before I even really knew that I should be driving the wireframe of a sales page as the copywriter on it. I just knew that it was a little bit easier to hand off to a designer when I really positioned, this is the headline, it goes here. This needs to be left justified. This should be in the center of the page and not go any further than this number of pixels, so on and so forth. I've since learned how to do this for real, for real, but it still helps then. We are trying to make it easy here for people to read what you're offering. Use white space to help you do that. A couple of bonus tips because I can't help it, watch the size of your font. When doing research for this, I saw a lot of tiny text that made my eyeballs want to cross. Another thing, watch how long your lines are on that page, keep them short, think how newspapers, how those columns work and they quickly help you read and scan. I want you to have that in your mind. Last tip, I want you to consider cold-ish traffic that's landing on the sales page. Now, if you're doing a big launch, you've got all those emails that maybe a copywriter has helped you get in place as far as the funnel and all the messages that that person, that prospect is gonna receive along the way. Plus, some people may not even be introduced to your offer until later in the launch. You also may always have this offer open. So are you writing things to more of a cold audience? Are they gonna land on this page and understand from your headline and your subhead copy what all is involved here. Are they gonna understand right when they land on your page from your headline and your subheadline if they're in the right place or not? I have a lot of feelings about sales pages and these are just some of my tips, but be on the lookout for an upcoming item in the Ashland Wright shop where I'm gonna really help you DIY both your sales page copy and the design. I'll link it down below when it's ready. Now you know how to write a better sales page, let's talk about how to tweak your website copy. Watch the next video where I'm gonna show you all about how to write a website that converts. If you like this video, give it a like and comment below what your favorite takeaway was.